Hello and welcome to this new blog post where I want to investigate how we can search for waste uh, with some drones and uh, how we can incorporate this outcome or result in the sustainability manager. So before we start, uh, here's a short agenda. First I will yeah, have a short look at the sustainability manager and how we use it as a reporting measurement and tracking tool. Then. I would like to focus on what kind of tools do we have available to manage, organize and track specific actions. Then I will try to explain what I did today. In this post I will do a demo and then I will come to some limitations of this waste, uh, waste collection and waste search process and at the end I will close with a summary. So how did I do things and uh, what have we focusing on today. First, let's have a look at the sustainability manager and what it is doing. And if you followed my previous posts, you know that, that the sustainability manager is a tool that collects information from different systems, uh, from different areas. And then we can track something like carbon footprint, water waste, recycling issues, and then do a reporting. And also, you know that we have a kind of scorecard where we can set goals and track them. Okay, so that's what we have. And then what I find missing is, well, where is the action? You, know, you track so many things. Um, everything is, is clear on, on, on paper or let's say electronically in our dashboard. But where's the action? You know? And when I say action, I don't mean something like this um, with James Bond, where you run and have some real action. Um, but what I mean is more like something um, related to environment. So collecting rubbish, planting trees or something. Yeah? Where do we track that? Where do we assign people and say, hey, please do this or check this spot? Yeah? Um, that's what I wanted to find out. And then the question is, of course, what kind of tools do we have available? How can we realize that? Well, if we know the sustainability manager, then we know that it's part of Dynamics 365. Uh, and you know that we have the power platform and in the power platform we can connect all the different tools and pieces uh, and of course all of this sits on top of Azure so we can use machine learning and other things to um, help us automate yeah, processes and now I said okay what are we going to do today and uh, from this picture you can already guess um, we will try to identify waste or rubbish. And what did I do? Well, um, I had a look at the paper that I found. Uh, it's already a couple of years old, but these people, um, they used standard drones. Um, actually, some better ones that compared to the one that I have, but they use drones to fly over certain areas and then try to identify whether there is rubbish or not. Um, what they did is, and that's a picture from this paper, is they programmed the drones. Yeah, so you can, if you have a, a good drone or some that allows you to do this, you can you can um, specify paths yeah? and then say, okay, please drone every morning um, at a certain time you fly above this area. Yeah? The drone that I have is basically uh, the, the cheapest one possible. It does not allow me to do that. Uh, so the only option I have is the free flight option. Uh, but nevertheless, um, it's not perfect, uh, but um, I could work with that. Uh, um, so what did I do? Well, I spotted six places in my home country, uh, in my hometown. Uh, these are these spots. So this one, this is number two, three, four, five and six. Uh, what did I do? Well. Um, when I make the photos, I had a look at the GPS coordinates. I was always making a photo at uh, 10 meters above the ground. Um, the camera was always looking 90 degrees down and I always uh, watch out to the north so that I have comparable pictures. Huh? And um, well, I started with the six spots, but because of some complaints of, of people working there or because of some yeah, I would say um, environmental or weather conditions. I skipped these two parts. Yeah? 
This one here is the center of the EU. If you if you have been there, it's it's very bright. The stones are super bright if the sun shines, so you cannot make a good picture during the day. Um, but I will come back later to that. So I ended up with these four spots uh, where I make uh, my photos. And then here is the process and today we focus only on the first two elements. So I make photos from the 30 spots and then I train an artificial intelligence model to identify whether there is waste or not. Uh, um, and then the other points, that's something I will try to um, focus on in a future post. Uh, so that we link it to the sustainability manager and then um, track and assign people to remove all of the waste. Yeah? So I was doing this with my bike. I used an artificial intelligence model and then the other parts, that, as I said, will hopefully be part of a future post if I can make it correctly and find some time to do that. But now after all this talking, let's have a look at uh, what I did and how I did that. Okay, so I start here in my SharePoint location that I just use as a temporary storage for my pictures. So you can use something else, um, whatever you like and find best. I found SharePoint is an easy way for me to um, process the pictures. So what did I do? Well, I said um, from my drone I have a memory stick included and from there I want to upload the photos. So I'm not transferring the pictures live. My camera allows that, but I found that uh, my internet connection is sometimes a bit slow on my phone that I have connected to my drone um, and that I use for controlling. So I said, okay, just store it on a stick, fly back home and then read the data from the stick. And what I want to show you here and demonstrate is um, the outcome. Yeah? So here are the pictures from my stick. You see the different locations. Yeah, um, these are the different spots, always in a similar manner that we that we did it. Yeah, and now, well, let's have a look at um, some some places where we can identify hopefully some some rubbish. Let's um, take this photo, um, and um, you can see if I if I hover over that, it has a size of more than four megabyte. But let's see what's the outcome. Yeah? And whether it can identify the, the rubbish or not because the size has an imp important implication on what's going on. Yeah? So once the file is uploaded here uh, a power automate flow runs. Yeah? That is um, this flow here and in this flow I use the AI builder. Yeah? Let's try to find it. Yeah? So I have here um, different uh, versions of my four hotspots. Yeah? These four spots were Geisbergbad, Neubaugebiet, Ulsama, Etika. Yeah? And first I train this um, with some pictures. Then I notice, okay, maybe I have to resize it. Maybe I need additional training photos. Therefore I make a version two. Yeah? And that's basically a, a simple object detection um, model that I use to train it with, to be honest, around 200 pictures each. Yeah? So you really need a lot of pictures to train these models. Yeah? If this is the case, yeah, then we can come here and maybe let's um, look at how I define this. Um, the flow will start once uh, it identified that a new picture was created and uploaded in the document library. So whenever I upload here a photo, yeah, I hold the file name first. Why? because I wanted to check out and test this. Yeah? Um, and therefore I needed the file name to easier identify things. So that's something you can skip. But then I have here this step where I get the file properties. Yeah? That's important. Why? Because I need something like longitude, latitude, time of the picture, um, the height, uh, and, and other information. With this information, I was then just reading the latitude and longitude. Yeah? I did some conversions because um, the way how this is uh, um, yeah, included in, in the file properties is, is a long, uh, a long uh, text file and I had to read it in a, in a specific way. But at the end, I was able to see latitude and longitude. And then I found, hey, how can I find out whether um, this is uh, in spot one, two, three, or four. Huh? 
And I, I checked um, on my map that I can find this based on the longitude separator. Huh? Um, so I hold this result here because it really helps me to identify um, where the picture was made. Then the other thing that I mentioned is the file size. Huh? Later we will see that we use the AI builder and the AI builder has a limit of four megabyte pictures. So I had to hold the file size from the properties and then check first, hey, is this file um, larger than four megabyte? If yes, then resize it um, and create the file or overwrite the file with the same name. If not, then just go on. Then I have two variables. The first variable is whether a rubbish was identified or not. Um, from the AI builder. But sometimes I noticed when I make photos really in a very, uh, let's say in a wrong time, where the light was not good and nothing could be identified, uh, then I said, okay, I need something where the result is not clear and the AI builder maybe cannot read it. Uh, okay, so these are the variables that I want to fill later on. And then you see here is a condition that says, okay, is this condition called my first way spot called guys back part. This is this uh, longitude. Yeah? This longitude gives me the information. This is guys back part. If this is not the case, then I have here um, this longitude with this number is Etika. If not, then I have another one. Then I'm in spot three. This one here, this longitude value gives me the, the new construction area. And finally, if this is also not the case, it's the last one. So the idea is always the same. I check where was the picture taken. Um, I move the file. So once it's processed, I move it from the waste upload um, section. For example, in our case, um, to this area. Yeah? So this, this connector is doing that. Then I grab the file content yeah? in these steps. And then I use the AI builder with my models to see if there was uh, rubbish or not. And then I said, hey, sometimes um, the, there's not really sure whether there's rubbish or not. Yeah? So I said, okay, detect the object name. I call it rubbish or people or vehicle yeah, or no rubbish. And then give me also the confidence score and only classify those pictures that have the tech rubbish and that have a probability that there's rubbish of more than 66%. Yeah? I found that that's a good um, percentage or likelihood. Only if I find um, elements in the picture that fulfill these conditions, yeah? then you add into the variable um, rubbish warning guys by part. Yeah? And of course, in the other sections, so here, Etika and the others, I did the same. Yeah? Now, sometimes, as I said, this AI builder here did not find a clear result. Huh? Then I said, okay, if it does not find a clear result, then you run this step. Huh? And only if this one, for example, fails, does not give a good result. Huh? And then I have here a variable that where I say, okay, um, hold the output and saying unclear. Unclear result, guys, back part. Huh? So I have my two variables filled through this step. Then I come here to the last step and I said, okay, if the AI builder identified something, some rubbish, uh, and in the text it says rub warning, uh, or it's an unclear result, uh, then you have a warning message. You take the GPS coordinates from on top, uh, longitude and latitude, and then you send an email. Uh, just put um, the text in and then the latitude and longitude. Of course, you could also send a message on a mobile phone. You could include maps here. That's all possible. Uh, I did not do that because I want to keep it easy. Um, and also it requires some premium connectors to include maps and so on. And I do not want to mess around with it. Now, on the other hand side, if there is no probability of uh, uh, rubbish, then I said, okay, then just say relax. We could not identify anything. Um, there is no no likelihood that there is a rubbish there. No? So now let's see. Um, that's my um, element that I processed yeah, while we were talking, and then we can uh, see through 
where it was identified. The important thing here is the location. So it was not Geist Backbart, um, but it was identified that this is in the Etika um, area. Now it runs through this uh, object detection and what it found was well, a couple of things. Uh, so it found rubbish with a likelihood of 82%. Then it found what else? Another rubbish. And you can, if I scroll through that, you can see here what it identified and uh, what are the likelihoods. Uh. And also what I did for myself is I included the file content here so that we can directly check. Uh. So here there were some elements that were really rubbish. Uh. Okay, so at the end rubbish was identified. Uh. And if we scroll down, then we got a, a warning message saying, okay, send out this uh, information. And here's my mailbox. Uh, so I have a rubbish warning. And you can see here are the GPS coordinates. So let's put that into a browser and um, see um, whether we can identify the spot. So if we scroll down here, we can um, then click on that. And um, yeah, let's see, not the road, but maybe uh, I think it's the area or something. Yeah, that's where I make the picture. And if we zoom in um, and move a bit to the left, then this is the parking lot. And here are some containers where I make the photos because here people sometimes drop rubbish. Um, and that's where we make the photos. So it's pretty precise so that your people know where to drive. Huh? And uh, yeah, basically clean the rubbish. Okay, so that's all for the process that I wanted to show. Um, let's now go back to my PowerPoint for some important remarks um, and limitations of this process. So after doing all of these exercises, let's have a look at the limitations. And um, first one is small rubbish, like these, these cigarettes, um, they're usually too small to be identified. And remember I was uh, flying my drone at a high of uh, 10 meters, yeah. Um, in the research paper that I showed you at the beginning, um, the people were flying at, I think, 17 meters. Something like this is just too small to be identified. Yeah? Of course, there are more expensive drones that have uh, optical zooms and where you can really zoom into to identify also such kind of things. But in general, it's, it's difficult to identify. The other thing that I found difficult to identify is if people drop rubbish and there is some crest or some, some kind of stuff over it, then you cannot see it from top. Uh, so sometimes there is rubbish, but you cannot see just because there's other things. Of course, you could um, attach more expensive equipment, maybe some, some special sensors on, on a drone, but then we talk about a, a four or five digit budget just to, to fly a drone around and, and see if there is some rubbish. And I said that's not worth the effort um, because what's more important is that you clean up all of this area um, rather than trying to find some fancy um, yeah, IT, IT things. The other thing that I found and that's, that's a limitation of my, my drone is um, when you fly it during um, noon, yeah, during um, a, a time when there is a very, very bright sunlight, then the picture quality might not be well. Yeah, so I have here some pictures that I made around 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And you can see that the picture quality is not good. Yeah? Why? Because it's just too bright to identify anything. So what would be necessary is to fly the drone during a time um, yeah, where the, the light conditions are good. Yeah? Um, or at least the, the sun is not yeah, just, just burning on, on the ground. Yeah? Um, as a summary, so what, what did I do? Yeah. So I was driving more than 200 kilometers with my bike to make really a lot of training photos to, to train these models. Yeah. Um, that's necessary. So don't expect that you can do this with 15 photos. I tried, but it won't work and you need 
really a, a lot of pictures with, with different kind of rubbish. Then I even got a flat tire driving too fast over a, a stone near the European center. Um, one of my spots, then I just had to repair it. And after all of the experience that I had when making the photos, huh? um, light conditions, uh, image size, and so on. And I even collected the garbage. Yeah? So even my, my community is a very, very clean, on first sight, very, very clean uh, society. I found a lot of rubbish that people just carelessly dropped, especially around um, this, this public uh, swimming pool. Um, and in, in basically an hour, I got uh, such a rubbish pool, which is like, like 50 liters of rubbish. So for me, the most important thing is um, actually to prevent all of this, this rubbish yeah? um, by teaching people. Yeah? Because sometimes they just carelessly drop a uh, kind of package from their ice cream, um, from their drink. Yeah? It looks small, but this kind of plastic waste, it's most of the time I found plastic waste, this is not degrading. Yeah? And even if you have bioplastic and you just drop it in the nature, um, it ultimately ends in, in our oceans uh, as microplastic and, and maybe kills animals. So the first thing is train people, train, 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 um, to create awareness that you cannot just drop your rubbish everywhere. Um, second thing is, I would like to thank um, the, what we call Team Orange here, the, the company that is responsible for cleaning up and keeping our society clean because they provided me the rubbish bags for free that I could use to fill what I found. Um, usually they cost some money and uh, they gave it for me uh, for free so that I could collect at least a bit. Huh? Because it's, it's not sufficient. Um, but let's see what we can do in the future. So that's it for this part. Um, how to identify the rubbish. I hope you found it interesting. Let's see if we can make a future post where we integrate it with the sustainability manager and track actions um, to assign people and so on. Okay, but that's it for today. As usual, if you have comments or remarks, send me an email or put it in the comment section. So thanks for the day and then till next time.